every once in a while, I, I, I come across a verse, and the thought that goes through my mind is, is that true of me? And is that even possible? <laughs> I, like, I don't know about you, but I mean, there's sometimes I come across a verse, and I'm like, whoa, that's not just convicting, it's a little bit overwhelming. Because I don't always know if the things that are said about others in the text, that are humans, are true about me. I had that experience as I was reading through the story of Noah and the Ark. It's a story that, you know, it's one of the fan favorites in children's church. Although the older that you get, it's kind of a little bit harder to um, to say out loud and not go, "What now? What happened?" <laughs> a matter of fact, one of my friends was telling me recently that that he was telling his kid for the first time Noah's Ark, the story, and he was like, "Man, and I went through and was talking about how all the evil had happened, and they the flood came and wiped them all out, and the child was only five years old. They looked at him, and they said." Why would you tell me a story that terrifying? <laughs> Sometimes I forget how incredible these stories are until a child reminds me. But it's the same feeling I get when I stumble across verses that at times I've forgotten even exist. And yet I wonder, is it true about me? See, chapter 6 of Genesis is where the story begins <clears throat> this is where the wickedness of the world is is at a level and it is so intense that God is deciding to take action. In verse 8 it says, Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And then the account starts where Noah is a righteous man, but the earth is corrupt. And so God starts in verse 13 to give him a litany of um, commands saying, listen, I'm going to I'm gonna fill the earth uh, with, with, with all kinds of water. <clears throat> Verse 14, so, so make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. In verses 15, go all the way down to verse 19 or 18 about the exact way to build the ark so that God can establish his covenant. Then verses 19 through 21 start talking about how two by two, I want you to fill all of the ark up with the animals. And then in verse 22, a verse comes out that makes me stop and go, is that true of me? Has it ever been true of me? But especially right now, is, is it true of me? Verse 22, and Noah did everything just as God commanded him. I find that to be such a beautiful and yet often overlooked part of this narrative. It's actually emphasized in the text three times. Chapter 7, verses 1 through 4. God then, now that Noah has built the ark, he tells them to go into the ark and to take these pairs of clean and unclean animals, male and female, and to organize, to bring them in. And then it says in verse 5, And Noah did all that God commanded him. Like twice in a period of six verses, it emphasizes that Noah did all that God commanded him. And even in verse 16, as everything really starts to ramp up with Noah and his family in the ark, verse 16 of chapter 7 says, The animals going in were male and female of every living thing, as God had commanded Noah. And even though it doesn't use the exact words, in the background you can hear this proclamation. And Noah did everything just as God had commanded him. And the question I had for myself and for us as a community this week is this. Is that true of us? Right now? Ever? Has there been a time whenever we hear what God commands, and we don't negotiate. We don't try to wiggle out of it. We don't try to soften it. We just simply obey all that he commands. 
you know, growing up, one of my favorite hymns to hear my mamma sing was, was, the, was the hymn, Trust and Obey. I can still hear her country drawl every time that hymn either comes up in some sort of, <clears throat> you know, radio station that I'm listening to, but especially whenever I'm out of church and I'm getting ready to preach. And the song leader starts to lead us in trust and obey. <clears throat> I think back to my mamma. And to that incredibly simple and yet deeply profound hymn that simply says, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. It is only whenever you start to take on that key characteristic of Noah Whenever you stop trying to ask the question, now why am I doing this? And you simply just trust and obey. That it's not just that you receive happiness, as the hymn indicates, but that you unite with the Lord to such a depth that every word that he speaks, you simply respond to. Has there ever been a time where it could be said of you that everything that the Lord had commanded you to do, you did. If not, get ready for it. <laughs> Here's my challenge for you this week. Obey. Listen to the Spirit that, 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 that convicts us in order to draw us nearer to union with God. Obey. Whatever the Spirit prompts you whenever you're in your time of prayer or convicts you of, whether it be seeking forgiveness for someone you have wronged or offering forgiveness for someone that has wronged you, or something as simple as buying that person, person groceries that's in front of you that you know is struggling, whatever it is that the Lord is calling you to do right now, here's what I want you to strive for this week. To live just one day where it can be said of you what was said of Noah. And Noah obeyed everything that the Lord commanded of him. I love you guys. Have a good week.